Good day, Prescott, and thank you for tuning in to another Prescott E-News Prescott Talk Show. My name's Glenn Martin, and today I'm bringing you a uh, candidate for Arizona State Chair, uh, GOP State Chair, Bob Latreri. Welcome, Bob, and thank you for coming in and talking to us today. Well, thank you, Glenn. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Well, Bob, I always like to start out with who you are and where you've been and kind of a little bit of your background, if you sure. could tell us. I came to Arizona in 1979. I got my MBA from Arizona State University. I've raised my three boys out here, two of which are career military. One of them had the honor of serving the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pentagon as Special Medical Liaison. And my youngest son, Matthew, is a tank commander currently stationed at Fort Benning. My oldest son is... Uh, an Arizona resident, an Arizona graduate of NAU, and a substance abuse counselor. Oh, wow. So you got a lot of, uh, lot of service in your family. Yes. Thank you for that. Uh, Bob, right now you're, you are the treasurer of the state GOP. Is that correct? Correct. So um, you kind of got the feeling where, where what's going on within the party and, and within the state. Why are you running for, for the... Uh, well, this is my fourth year as treasurer, and the first two years were dominated by getting the AZ GOP back in FEC compliance. Mm -hmm. The issues facing the party at the time uh, were labeled legal peril. We were facing sanctions that would have disallowed the party from collecting any contributions. So it took me two full years, my first term as treasurer, to get out from under the sanctions imposed from the 2014 cycle that was under audit, the 2016 cycle that was under audit, and it was a laborious task. I had to make many changes at the AZ GOP, including the FEC compliance firm, so I was able to get the party back in good standing. In fact, Chris Roach, who runs the organization that put us under review at the FEC, told me that in 14 and 16, the party had 101 audit points in 18, my first term, we only had one, and my second term, we have none so far. So I, uh, I've accomplished something for the party. Sure. And I have a platform to build from because I understand how the parties as a, as a business should function. Mm -hmm. My primary focus is not on politics, it was on getting a business run the way a business should be, accountability, transparency a very detailed uh, uh, treasurer's report issued monthly to anybody on the uh, exec comm that wants to see it. Sure. And I certainly share it with the chairman and the uh, executive director in detail. So going for a chair, if you are elected as chair, that's a big step in another direction. Um, you know, as a Republican, you know, and after seeing the results of our election, you know, it seems like our party statewide anyway, um, might be having some issues. What can you bring to the party? How can you fix these issues? Well, you know, one of the best experiences I've had was canvassing. Mm -hmm. I've knocked on 540 doors. Mm -hmm. And I think that the role of the PC is invaluable because the Democratic Party, because they outraise us eight to one financially in the state of Arizona, have won the air war. We need to win the ground war. We need more boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. As a state, we only have 43% of the available seats for PCs filled. My goal, and I think it's a reasonable goal in the first two years, would be to raise it to 65%. And in order to do that, I've identified a number of people, patriots, activists, that know how to train a PC and know how to select a PC, which is the most important thing. We don't need paper PCs. We need people who want to be active that are not afraid to knock on the door and talk to their neighbor mm -hmm. and ask them what's going on and explain why the Republican Party has the platform that will benefit them and their children. So let's back up just a little bit. Explain to the folks what a PC is. Okay. Because you use the PC a lot. Yes. And for the folks that are sitting there going, who is this guy and what's a GOP You know, uh, Glenn, chair? I got that same yeah. question from a, a group of 150 Republicans. Mm -hmm. Only Ooh. three were PCs. Yeah. So a PC is a precinct committeeman. Mm -hmm. The way to find out where your PC is on your voter registration card, it'll tell you what your precinct is. Mm -hmm. Now... A precinct committeeman has to be elected. You get 10 signatures on a petition. You submit them to the, S, uh, the uh, uh, Secretary of State. You get on the ballot. 
You vote for yourself and you won. Mm -hmm. And now you're an elected PC. Yeah. And from there, you can be elected to be a state committeeman, and those are the folks that vote for me. But focusing on PCs, we need more. I mean, if we graze it to 65%, that's 2,000 more PCs. But we want PCs who are truly activists, mm -hmm. which can I emphasize, no paper PCs. Mm -hmm. We want people that not only will show up for meetings, but have the ability and the desire and the aptitude to talk to people and explain why the Republican Party platform will benefit them more than the Democratic yeah. platform. And the great point, Bob, because you know I see a lot of uh, uh, people on social media complain about, and the Republicans, by the way, complain about other Republicans. Really, if you want to get involved, if you really want to get, you know, uh, again, like you said, boots on the ground and, and get involved with the Republican Party, a PC is really a great way to do it. That is, yes, that absolutely. I mean, your voice now goes directly to the party and the politics thereof. Okay, so we now have a red party in a blue state. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to change that? Yeah. We're not going to change that by talking heads. Mm -hmm. It's gotten us nowhere. We're going to change it from the ground up by getting more PCs who want to talk to people who believe in the Republican Party and know it's the best for the country mm -hmm. and get them involved. That's how we're going to take the state back over. And I'm going to invite everybody out there right now who lives in our area to go on the onto uh, the web, and that's Yavgob Web, and find out how to become a PC and get involved. And they'll send you all the information out. It's really easy. I'm a PC. I went out and got my 10 signatures. I submitted it to the Secretary of State. And again, I was voted in. It's not really tough. No. And, and the really neat thing about Yavgop is our PCs are filling up more and more and more. More and more people are wanting to get involved. But if you're watching this in another area, please get involved with the party. Um, if you truly are a Republican and you want to save our state and keep our conservative values going, this is a great way that, you know, um, the local people can get involved. Right. Okay. And then, so... Like you were saying, once you're a PC, then there is an internal election for state committeemen. Right. And that, go ahead. Each uh, LD, that's a legislative district, has a number of PCs that they're allowed. It's 150 registered voters to one PC. Then we go to a state committeeman. You can get 30% of the PCs elected as state committeemen. The state committeemen only have one obligation, and that's to come to the annual meeting that's in January. They vote for bylaw changes, and they vote for the, uh, uh, the executive committee, which starts with the chairman, secretary, treasurer, and then the assistants, the first chair, second chair. And the odd number of years is where you vote for the chairman, secretary, and treasurer. The even number of years is where you vote what we call the non-statutory offices, and those are the assistants. Mm -hmm. So, it, again, you can progress up even within the party. Yes, you can. Excellent. So, um, what do you? How do you feel about our short-term opportunities? Where do we stand, Bob? What What can we do? Well, I think my short-term opportunity plays into the long-term opportunity, mm -hmm. or the long-term goal, I should say. And the long-term goal is to get the state red again. We have now Democratic senators. Uh, we have a, a Secretary of State that's a Democrat. Uh, we have more congressmen that are Democrats than Republicans. So this is a red, a, a blue, a blue state, mm -hmm. but I'm a red party. Yeah, exactly. So I want to take the state back over as a, a red state. So my short-term goal that leads into long-term is to build the party from the ground up more PCs, reaching more people. Right now, the party funds an organization that goes out and registers voters. I would rather pay a PC to go out and get a, reg a, a voter to register or get someone to register as a voter. Mm -hmm. They know their territory a lot more than somebody that we're hiring to come into that territory. Mm -hmm. So short-term goal, build a base of PCs, activist PCs, Get them involved, not only in speaking to their neighbor, but in voter registration. We hear so often that Maricopa County is the fastest growing county in the country. Well, they're coming from California. Mm -hmm. 
and wanna, they want to make our Arizona their California. The way to stop it is speak to them mm -hmm. while they're while we're getting right. ready to register. Right. Talk to them about the benefits of the Republican Party. And we need PCs to do that. Yeah. People who are sold on the party, not people that are paid by an organization to go out and stand at the library and other places and do that. Well, you hit a good point, Bob, because you know I'm from California. I came over here, and I was always a conservative there. And I came here, and other Californians that come over, I hear them say, well, I didn't want the high taxes or I didn't want, you know, right. uh, I wanted to get out of California for whatever reason. But then when the tax comes up, they say, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to vote for it. And it's the PCs, really. It's the people, the boots on the ground again going, whoa, 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 remember, that's how we got in trouble in California. Right. Connect the dots. Sometimes people just need to listen to the, how the dots are connected and how we can wind up in what I call deep kimchi yeah. like we did in uh, California. You know, one of the uh, uh, strongest evangelists for the Republican Party is a lady that relocated from California. And she, she enlightened me. She said that 50%, catch this, 50% of the nation's homeless population lives in California. Mm -hmm. How did they allow that? I don't want that. I can't live with that. That's why I've come to Arizona. Right. She is an evangelist. She will tell you what happened in mm -hmm. California, yeah. why she won't live there anymore. Mm -hmm. Beautiful cities that are sanctuary cities, unsafe to live in, unsafe to walk in. So those are the voices that California people need to hear. Yeah, I came from, I came, originated from the beach area and went into Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. And um, I could just see it's going the wrong direction. And when I talk, a lot of people say, well, you know, you just don't understand Arizona politics. They say, well, excuse me, I do, because I have the t-shirt from the California politics. And I know, and I watched in my lifetime, how it went down the tube and what it is today. So please, again, if you're somebody who likes to speak out and speak to people and can communicate, you know, PC is where it's all at. Right. I, I would agree. So um, why don't you take a couple minutes and speak to the audience why they, you know, uh, well, I should say the state committeemen, right. and as well as the PCs, why you want to be the chair and what are you going to bring to the party overall? Well, what I, what, I, what I want to address the state committee, first and foremost, is not only the growth in PCs, but change in bylaws. Right now, if we take a look, a deep dive into the bylaws, from a corporate organization person, I see one single point of failure, and that's the state chairman. There's too much authority invested, too much responsibility invested. It's, it's difficult for that person to wear all those hats and then be an effective fundraiser. So I want to take the 107 members of the XCOM, 84 of which are voting, 23 are not, and create subcommittees. The bylaws right now have appointed chairs that somehow or another never seem to get appointed. I want to roll them into the XCOM, give them duties and responsibilities, accountability, monthly meetings, to have a finance committee, to have a registration committee, to have a, a, a political committee get people really involved and give them the responsibility to make these things happen. Too much invested in the chair. I want to divest. I want to give more responsibility to people that were elected to do something. When I go around and speak to the LDs, many of which are members of the XCOM, they say all we have is one thing to do by the bylaws and that's approve a budget. And then after that, there's nothing for me to do. I don't like going to the meetings. They're boring. Mm -hmm. So I want to change that. I want to change the bylaws to give responsibility and authority to people that were elected to do something for the party. And the other major change I want to see mm -hmm. is the way we fund the party. Right now, if we take a look at the FEC reports, we'll see that uh, we're, we're, we've caught up to the Democrats somewhat. In March, they got raises three to one on the FEC level. That's the federal level. Now we've come a little closer, but both parties are dominated by funding from the National Committee. Now, the presidential election is over. We're not going to see that inflow of funds. We're going to have to depend more on the PCs for funding. And one of the things I've learned by going around and speaking to people is that they've lost trust in the AZ GOP, mm -hmm. largely because of the sanctions that the FEC were putting on them. 
It's not enough for me to tell them that, look, this is what I did. Can't you trust me? I don't really get a warm response when I yeah. say that. So what I have to do is I have to get into these LDs on a regular basis, speak to the PCs, and get them to understand what I'm going to do with their money. Get people to register. Mm -hmm. Pay PCs to do that. Get the word out as to why the Republican Party is should be the party of choice. So yeah. that's what I, that 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 those are my intentions. Great. I'm basically running. Uh, you know, I um, I'm at a certain age in my life where I don't think that I'm going to be running for senator or governor. So I don't have any real political aspirations other than this. So I want to serve the party, serve the state, and get the AZ GOP to take back Arizona. Great program. I'm looking forward to it, Bob. So if people wanted to get a hold of you, you have an email address? I do. It's my name, Bob Letiri. So it's B-O-B-L-E-T-T-I-E-R-I -E -E at Outlook.com. And we'll put that up on the screen. So if anybody wants to contact Bob, ask him questions, maybe even how to become a PC, that would be a good one, right? Yes. So, we're, the, we're all here to help anybody who right. wants to come aboard. It doesn't okay. matter if you're the chair or if you're a PC down, you know, in a small district in Arizona. So um, thank you, Bob. Thanks for coming in and talking to us and taking your time. And, you know, Bob, every time I have a show, I always uh, say thank you to our current serving and prior serving military for giving us the opportunity to sit at the table and enjoy the freedoms that we are absolutely enjoying today. You know, I, I need to mention something. I always get uh, reminded my daughter-in-law, Christine, married to my son, Christopher, is also a colonel and a doctor in the Army. And uh, I know my son and her have a little rivalry going. Uh, uh, you know that she saw actual live combat in the, uh, in the Iraqi war. Iraqi war, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for all your family's service. We appreciate it. Okay. And I also like to thank our law enforcement firefighters for keeping our streets safe. We support you 100%. And, um, you know, Prescott's got a great fire department. Uh, they saved my life personally. And our police and our whole area, our sheriff, they're outstanding. So, guys and gals, thank you again for your service. And with that, Prescott, we'll see you soon and take care.